All right. So we notice that the A is the same as on the standard form, but H and K are different. This H is the X coordinate of the vertex, which is also the axis of symmetry. This K is the Y coordinate of the vertex, which is also the min or the max. Okay? So that's something that we already know right now. We know, oops, that's the wrong thing. We know that this is the axis of symmetry. And we know that this is the min or max, depending on which way it faces, right? All right. I'm going to help you graph these. You do not need to graph these three because I'm going to give you ten of them to graph in just a second. So I will graph these three. You will watch. All right? Hopefully I can graph these without any problems. I want you to look at this first one. It says x minus 2 in parentheses squared minus 3. I need you to tell me A, and I need you to tell me the vertex. What's A? Okay, that is not an A. <laughs> That's an A. A is 1. I totally agree with you. A is 1. What about the vertex? Okay, let's be super careful here because notice up here that says minus H. So that's a positive 2 because if I, if I need that to be minus, then that 2 right there has to be positive. So this is a positive 2. And what about the K? Now, the K is negative. That's good. So my vertex is positive 2, negative 3. We'll do some more to make sure we get that, okay? It all has to do with the negative on the inside. It's actually the opposite of what you think it is, okay? Remember when we did all those function transformations like two weeks ago? No, beginning of the semester. Remember how if we were on the outside of the function, it moved it up and down. If we were on the inside of the function, it moved it left and right, but it always did it backwards from what we thought? That's the exact same thing. That's exactly what this is, is a function transformation. On the inside, you move the vertex to the left or to the right. On the outside, you move it up and down. And together, it makes the vertex. All right, here's what it'll look like graphing it. I need to go to 2, negative 3. 2, 1, 2, negative. I'm going to start here. 2, negative 3. See if I can put the point down there. Of course, I cannot. All right, it's close. This thing doesn't graph well with the points. You know that. All right, so there's my vertex. If that is my vertex, what else is it? Minimum. It is the minimum it's and the axis. the axis of symmetry. So I know right now that my axis of symmetry is right there. Man, I'm being very sloppy. I'm going to have to switch to the board here in a second. Because that would not count for you guys. All right, um, okay, I'm in good shape. Man, I sure wish I knew another point. It doesn't give me the y-intercept, does it? Okay, that's when you go back and you think about A. Remember, the parent function, the original, original quadratic graph, which does not look like that, the original quadratic graph had this table of values, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, etc., 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 right? Remember that. So if I know that it was at 0, 0, then I was going to go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 3, up 9. That was my basics, right? Well, is my A a 1? Yes. So I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to come here. I'm going to go over 1, up 1. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go over 2, up 4. And I'm going to try to put those points there with any luck, of which I'm not having. There we go. I don't know if I can get the other one in, but do you see where I can get it now? And then it is symmetrical, isn't it? So I can go to the other side. All right. I hate to do it, or I really hate to do it, but I'm going to have to switch and go to the board because I cannot seem to graph these on this thing. Okay? But do you guys have any questions so far? All right. All right. So we are going to change this from standard to vertex form. It's currently in standard. We need to change it to vertex form. Now remember, 
My standard form and my vertex form both have something in common. What letter do they have in common? A. a. And what's my A? One. It's going to be 1. So in this case, it's a 1. It's the letter in front of the x squared term, the coefficient of the x squared term. Now, just I'm going to write down my new form just because it's new. All right. So I'm looking to have my final answer look something like this. I want my A, which I now know is a 1, parentheses x minus h something squared, um, plus k. So that's what I'm looking to have. Now, like I said, I, I know this is a 1 already, so I got one thing done. Um, the C doesn't help me, does it? The B, none of the rest of it really helps me, right? So I've got to think for a second. You know, how can I get this changed over? Standard form's not bad, but vertex form seems to be quicker to graph, doesn't it? So if I can find a quick way to change this from standard to vertex then that would be beneficial, okay? Now, look right here inside your vertex form. Just focus right here. You've got x minus h squared. What do we call that thing? We've perfect used it a lot. Square. It is a perfect square. That's a perfect square. We used it a lot last week, right? Man, it would be nice if there was a perfect square up here. Well, I mean a whole binomial, the whole perfect square trinomial thing. X squared minus 4x. Okay, that's not quite, but you're on the right track. This isn't quite a perfect square, is it? But didn't I learn a technique last week to force this to be perfect? And it's called completing the square. It's called completing the square. What I want to do is I want to, com oops, I want to complete the square here, okay? If I complete this square just with the x squared plus minus 4x, then I'll have a perfect square, and then it'll look like vertex form. So that's where I'm going to focus my attention. I've got y equals. Now, this work's going to get real sloppy, but the reality is this only takes about two lines to get it done, okay? So I've got y equals. I need to complete this square. So I've got x squared minus 4x. I'm going to leave myself a little space so I can complete it. And then there's my minus 5. Okay. Actually, wait a second. You know what? Last week when we completed the square, what was the very first thing we would do? We'd get rid of the 5, wouldn't we? The minus 5? Because it's not perfect. It was in our way, so we'd add it to the other side. Right? So, you don't do this. I'm going to do this. But don't write this down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add 5 for just a second. Add 5 here and add 5 here. Of course, those would go away, won't they? All right. But let's think for a second. Um, that's going to give me over here, that's going to give me y plus 5, right? Yeah. Is that what I want? No. I don't want y plus 5. What do I want? Aww. Just plain old y. So I'm going to do my problem, do my problem, do my problem, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to get to the very end, and then I'm going to get rid of that 5, aren't I? Yeah. So if I know that I'm going to get rid of it at the very end anyways, why waste my time and put it over here now, why don't I just leave it here to begin with? Would that not save myself a step? So, I know that last week when we were solving by completing the square, we would normally get rid of that 5, but because this is a function with the y equals, see last week we didn't have the y equals, did we? We had 0. But see, now i got the y equals, so let's just leave the 5 where it's at. Let's not mess around with it. So, I'm not going to do any of that. All right, I'm going to leave the 5 where it's at. Let's complete the square. How do I finish completing this square? I do negative 4 over 2 squared. What's negative 4 over 2 squared? Four. Plus 4, right? So I'm going to add 4 right here. Right? And when you do something to one side, you have to do it to the other, right? So once again, don't write this down. But I'm going to do plus 4 right here, and then normally I would add 4 right here. Because when you have to do it to one side, you have to do it to the other. But what did we just talk about? I don't really want anything over here. So if I do the problem, do the problem, do the problem, at the very end of the problem, what am I going to do with this 4? I'm going to move it right back over here. So let's save ourselves a step. And instead of adding 4 here, let's minus the 4 here. Why did I do the opposite? Just 
Because it's on the same side. In order for these to balance, they have to be zero, right? Plus four minus four gives me zero. Or, like we just said, add four to this side. What's the very next step? Subtract it. You see how they take care of each other? So, I'm not really going to add the four to both sides. I'm just going to save myself the step, and I'm going to put plus four on the inside because that completes the square. And then I'm going to put minus four on the outside, but on the same side and it balances out. All right, so I've got the square completed now. What does that look like? X minus that's correct. So that's going to be x minus 2 quantity squared. And minus 5 minus 4 is minus 9. nine. Does that look like what I wanted it to be? Is that in vertex form now? <coughs> it is. These will go quicker now that we don't have to talk about the why we do what we do. What's the A on this one? A is 1. Again, right? Oh, well then we should know this one, right? Okay, let's try a new problem. All right, um, what is A here? Still 1, right? So just like the last problem, it's still 1. Um, what can I do to complete the square right here? That's going to be x squared, y equals, sorry, y equals x squared plus 6x. How do you complete that square? I'm going to add 9 is what I heard. Add 9. Okay. If you don't remember, 6 over 2 squared. So that's right. That's going to be a plus 9. If I add 9 here, then I add 9 here. But then it just ends up being subtracted, doesn't it? So I'm going to do minus 9. And that cleans up. What does the square look like when you clean that up? That's going to be x plus 3 squared minus 1. And vertex form. All right. So here's a case where a is not 1. So this time a is 2, right? Now, uh, this does pose a little challenge to us. We, do know, we know what the a is, okay? But now we're going to have to do some thinking again. Okay, again, once again, we really want this to, to end up looking like this form. And I, have, I now have my A. Okay. I wonder how I can get this 2 out front. How do you normally get a 2 out front? Okay, I understand what you mean to hold divided by 2. Let's kind of keep that same line, but let's not divide. Let's just do the factor. Let's take a small group. Let's do a group factor right here. What goes into both of those? 2. It's actually 2x, but definitely the 2. If I pull the 2 out, does that not bring it into the front? And that leaves me with x squared plus 4x, and then there's my minus 5. Is it okay to factor just a small part of the equation? Yeah. I didn't not do anything with it yet, but you know what? It sure looks like this now, doesn't it? Doesn't it look more like I want it to? I have the two out front? All right. So I've got my two out front. Now, really this isn't any different than the last problem. Now, complete that square. So now I'm going to complete this square that's going to be y equals 2 parentheses. That's going to be x squared plus 4x. Let's see, there's my minus 5. How do I complete this square? Just want to make sure. Okay, that's going to be plus 4. Let me switch out of red. Well, it has to be. Plus 4. Does everybody know where the plus 4 came from? Okay, remember that was 4 over 2 squared. That gave you that. Okay, plus 4. Now what am I going to do here? Subtract 4. I'm going to have to stop here and think for a second because that's not quite right. When I added the 4 here, I really am not adding 4. What does this 2 right here do? Yeah. Isn't there a little distributive property right there? Because of that little distributive property right here, I'm not really adding 4. What am I really adding? I'm really adding 8. 
So that's exactly how I need to take care of it. I need to, instead of adding 4, I need to subtract 8. I need to do the opposite. I need to subtract 8. That little 2, that little A out front, caused me a problem. Okay? I had to remember that technically there's a little distributive property there. So it's not just plus 4, it's plus 8, which means I subtract 8. Now you really are looking at the answer. You just have to clean it up. Y equals 2 parentheses. What does that look like as a factor? X plus, X plus 2 squared. And then I got minus 5 minus 8, which is minus 13. Okay, same idea. <clears throat> What's the A? A is negative 3. Okay, now this one has a negative. I wonder if that's going to make a difference or not. Um... So let's see, I'm going to factor that A out. Now be careful on your factor, and I'm going to slide over a little bit, but Y equals, if I factor out the negative 3, what am I left with? The X, squared. X squared, good. I heard plus. It's actually going to be minus, isn't it? Minus 4X. And then there's my plus 2, right? When I took out a negative here, that ended up changing this sign, didn't it? And you can always multiply to check your work, right? So that right there has to be a negative. Good. Okay, well, uh, I have that factor out now. Now I need to complete this square. So what would I do to complete this square? That's going to be negative 4 over 2 squared. We'll go right here. Let's see, what's that? Okay, that's going to be plus 12, right? So I'm going to get rid of that parentheses. And you said it's going to be plus 12? No, that can't be right. Negative 4 over 2. Oh, 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 you were answering the final part. Yeah, this part is a 4. But then over here, it ends up being negative 3 times. That ends up being 12. So if that was a plus 4, this is a minus 12, but I do have one thing. Remember it was that 3 that was causing me problems, right? What kind of 3 is it? It's negative. So this tells me that I should be adding 4 to complete the square. This tells me I should be doing the opposite, which is subtracting it, but because that was negative, negative 4 times, that ends up being plus. That ends up changing to plus. All right. And like I said, it really does get you down to the final answer in one step. If you see what's going on, it's negative three here. When you simplify your completing the square factor, you've got x minus two squared. And you've got two plus 12 is 14. And that's nice, right? Because you got your vertex. What is the vertex of this one? 2, positive 14. Does this face up or down? down? Faces down because of the negative. Is it the same size as a normal graph? Yes. Nope, it's three times skinnier, right? Or three times as fast, or however you want to say that. All right. Your assignment's at the bottom.